Hiking through Silver Falls State Park in Northwest Oregon, we passed through so many waterfalls that it got me thinking, is there a way to actually determine how tall these waterfalls are? Using some smart physics possibly. Today, we ask the question, can you hear the height of a waterfall? On this journey, we'll explore what makes waterfalls so loud, how their sound connects to their height, and yes, we even test this idea with some real-world data that I collected right here while hiking. Before we plunge into it, take a second and let me know in the comments about your favorite waterfall, one that you've either visited or would like to visit, and how tall you think it is. Just your first guess. And by the way, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon below so you don't miss out on any new scribbles from the scribbled equation. To understand why waterfalls are so loud, let's start with energy. Water at the top of a fall has potential energy. It's high up and it's brimming with gravitational potential, waiting to drop. As it falls, gravity pulls it down, converting that potential energy into higher speed and thereby higher kinetic energy. When the water crashes into the rocks or the pool below, its energy is transformed into splashes, turbulence and vibrations, which generate sound waves. And as always, energy isn't lost, it simply changes form. Think of it as nature's percussion section. Every splash, every bubble and ripple adds to the roar of a waterfall. The louder the sound, the more energy being transformed into motion and vibrations. But not all waterfalls sound alike. Why is that? It turns out that a unique sound print emerges from an utterly complicated process. The sound of a waterfall is influenced by a variety of factors, including the water's flow rate, the height of the falls, and the distribution of rocks below. The shape of the falls matters as well which can create an amphitheater-like resonance effect around it. Beyond this, even surrounding vegetation and turbulence in the water play significant roles in shaping the overall acoustic experience. To complicate things a little further, how loud a waterfall sounds doesn't just depend on its power. It also depends on how far you are from it. Sound spreads out like ripples in a pond, losing intensity as it covers more area the further you get from it. This is the inverse squared law. The intensity of sound you hear, its loudness, L, decreases with the square of your distance, R, from the source. That's because all the energy is now spread over a larger area, giving the intensity to be power divided by 4 pi R square. Now, let's zoom in on the physics of the water falling. If a mass delta M of water falls over, it loses gravitational potential energy of delta M times G times H, where H is the height of the waterfall. And this gets converted into kinetic energy as it reaches the base. If water is flowing at a rate of F, which is delta M over delta T, this gives us the power of the waterfall's conversion of potential into kinetic energy. Some of this now gets converted into sound energy, and this depends on a bunch of environmental factors. Since this is really, really hard to model, I'm simply going to lump its effect into a factor C, which depends on the shape of the falls and its surroundings. Not all kinetic energy is converted into sound, so one would possibly expect C to be less than 1. But then in some cases, echoes and reflections can amplify the sound, possibly making C more than 1. So here is the cool part. If two waterfalls have roughly the same flow rate and similar shapes, their sound power P will scale with their height H. So theoretically, if we measure the loudness of these two falls from roughly the same distance, we can use it to estimate the ratio of their heights. I put this idea to the test while hiking through Silver Falls State Park. Now finding two falls with similar flow rates and environmental conditions is often not so easy to do. But luckily, the waterfall-filled landscape 
and the amazing hike at Silver Falls made it possible. The two waterfalls that I chose were Middle North Falls and Drake Falls. For one, they are sourced by the same stream and therefore have a similar flow rate. They are also relatively close to each other along the hike, making their environmental conditions very comparable. And their heights vastly different. All I had to do now was find a spot so I could be roughly the same distance from each of them. To reliably record the sound of the waterfall, I used an app on my phone called the Physics Toolbox Sensor Suite by Viera Software. It's an amazing app which uses the sensors in your smartphone to collect data for science analysis. It's pretty cool and I often use it in my classes as well. I leave the link in the description below. We were first at Middle North Falls and by the way, you can literally walk behind the waterfall so that was really something. At Middle North, I recorded a sound intensity of about 74 decibels. Next, we went to Drake Falls and here is how that went. As you can see, we are now at Drake Falls, which has a height of about 27 feet. And Drake Falls, as you will now see, is down there. If I was to take a guess, we are roughly at the same distance to Drake Falls right now as we were to Middle North Falls before. So the distance R is the same to both the falls. Let's see what we can do with the map around here now. At Drake Falls, we recorded a sound intensity of about 67 decibels. By positioning ourselves roughly at the same distance as we were to Middle North Falls. But wait a second. What is this decibel scale of loudness? This decibel scale isn't your everyday linear ruler. It's logarithmic and it's relative, meaning every 10 decibel increase corresponds to a tenfold jump in sound intensity. For example, leaves rustling around 20 decibels are about 10 times louder than breathing at 10 decibels. A rock concert is typically about 110 decibels. That's a billion times with a B more intense than that rustle of those leaves. It's a powerful way to capture the massive range of sounds that our ears can handle. So if I detect decibel readings R1 and R2 from two sources, the ratio of their sound intensities at my location is given by the exponential in their difference. Back to our waterfalls now. This means that the 8 decibel difference translates to Middle North being about 5 times more intense than Drake Falls. And lucky for us, the height of Drake Falls was benchmarked by the Oregon Parks and Recreation Department to be at 27 feet, which is about 8 meters. So now we can use this and our sound measurements to infer the height of Middle North Falls to be 40 meters about 131 feet. But just how high is Middle North Falls really? This Friends of Silver Falls website tells me it's about 106 feet. Now honestly, I simply just eyeballed a comparable distance to each of these falls. And given that waterfall environments are rather unique, the fact that I came within a factor of 10 is really astounding to me. I don't want to oversell the efficacy of this method. Of course, not every test went as smoothly. I also tried this method on winter falls and double falls, but the results were not that great. Why you ask? Likely differences in shape, flow rate, and let's be honest, I was freezing and really getting impatient with the measurements. So next time you're near a waterfall, don't just watch, listen. Beneath the roar, there's a story waiting to be heard. And with a little physics, you might just hear its secrets. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.